Bruchem Aboyim, thank you for coming. Again, we are on the uh, Gematria series, and we are on Lecture 13. Tonight we'll be talking about the number 11, and um, we'll see how far we get with numbers. Um, so the number 11 makes relatively few appearances in Judaism. It is the first number that is not designated by a new Hebrew name. Eleven is called Echad Asar, so it's called, which literally means ten plus one. So it doesn't have like a name, so to speak, by itself. Eleven refers to the conveyance of the divine light which transcends the limits of the world within the limits of the world. The world was created with ten utterances. Eleven then refers to a level above the limits of that set. Nevertheless, since it is also a number which follows in sequence to 10, we can understand that it refers to the fusion between the transcendent divine light and the framework of limited worldly existence. According to the Arizal, the number 11 indicates an excess, a spillage, an overdoing or wasting of divine energy. One of the most famous, famous things that connect with 11 is the Ketorit, the incense, that was burnt in the temple. Rashi says in Shemot, and he explains that only 10 of the spices of the incense of the Ketorah were actually sweet smelling. The 11th spice, which was called the Chalbana, really gave off a putrid smell. In fact, it really could have been substituted that you could use urine, it just wouldn't be honorable, but it would have somewhat the same type of repugnant smell. It was, it was this negative smell, though, that made all the other sm spices smell better. And from the Ketoris, we learn a great lesson in prayer. That a minyan should be made up, a group of men, ten men, should be made up of all types of people. In fact, the word for a congregation is called a tzibur. And tzibur, congregation, is an acronym for, there are three letters, Sadik, Bez, and Resh. The tzaddik stands for a, again, a tzaddik, an actual righteous individual. A bainani, the bays, a person who's in the middle. And the resh for a rasha, for an evil individual. So three types of people, tzaddik, bainani, and rasha. And Rashi continues and states that when we repent and pray to God, we should not refuse to allow sinners to join us in prayer. On, on the contrary, only when their prayers are combined with ours will our prayers give off a sweet scent to God. In fact, the Gemara in Talmud and Kretut states that every communal fast that does not include sinners of Israel is not a viable fast. That's how important it is to have a section of all types of people, not just righteous individuals. There is a close affinity between Asaph, Yaakov's brother, and the number 11. When the Torah lists Asaph's descendants, the Torah enumerates 11 Edomite chieftains. It was an 11-day journey from Chorev to Kadesh Barnea via Asaph's homeland of Mount Seir. The succession from 10 to 11 resembles the journey from completion to unnecessary excess. When Yaakov and Asaph met on Yaakov's return from Lovin's house after 20 years, Yaakov said to Esav, Yesh li kol, which means I have everything. He was content with what God had given him, alluded to by the number 10. Esav, on the other hand, said, Yesh li rab, which means I have a great deal, meaning a lot, but still a desire for more, alluding to the number 11, excess. All this excess is reflected in the spiritual emptiness of Esav. So the number 10 represents completeness, a full and complete amount, and the number 10 represents Yaakov's purposeful existence. The ideology of Esav of setting no limitations and amassing much more than one needs is represented by the number 11. Esav follows the solar calendar and Yaakov the lunar calendar. The solar calendar has 365 days and the lunar calendar 354 with the difference of 11 days. Rosh Chodesh, the time frame of the lunar year that runs contrary to Esav's solar year, 
was marked by 11 sacrifices. Two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs, and one goat. Asaph's nemesis was Yosef Hatzadik. Joseph. He was the eleventh son born to Yaakov. Yosef's birth was the catalyst that prompted Yaakov to return home to Canaan. He no longer feared his brother Esav. As Rashi states, Yaakov's house will be a fire, Yosef's house a flame, and Esav's house is made of straw. They will ignite them and devour them. There's a name of God called that we spell with a yud and a hay called ka, which is one of God's names that represents severity. When we add to the yud and the hay, a vav and another hay, well, we change that severity into mercy, and we have God's name of the yud ke vav ke. Again, the name we do not pronounce. We just say Hashem. The vav and the hay have a numerical value of 11. There are six mitzvot that a person fulfills when he gives charity. However, there's another 11 that you receive when, you, when the charity is given with kindness. Six and 11 is 17. 17 is the gematria of the word tov. Again, something that's very good. In fact, the kindness that's given can even be given to a rich person. And again, it includes everyone. Now, the Mishkan had 11 goat hair curtains. Yosef dreamt about the 11 stars bowing down to him, which caused his brothers to hate him more and seal his fate by being sold into slavery and, and sent down to Egypt. Yaakov entered the land of Canaan with 11 sons. His 12th son, Binyamin, was born in Israel. Dat, others say Keser, is the 11th of the spheros of the traits that God has taken upon himself when he created the world. Both Yeokim and Sidkiah, Sid kings that reigned for 11 years in the city of Jerusalem in Jerusalem. Noach's ark sat 11 amos in the water when it was floating during the flood. The Rambam categorizes 11 type of spiritual defilement and the period of separation of Azov, a woman with a venereal disease from her husband, is 11 days to confirm it. The number 11 is connected with the concept of redemption. And the entry into the land of Israel is evidenced by the fact that Moshe began to address the Jews in the desert in the 11th month. Shvat is the 11th month of the year. The revelation of the 11th brings, excuse me, the revelation of the 11th level brings about redemption from all boundaries and limitations bringing the true and complete redemption. There were 11 curses and blessings mentioned by Moshe before his death. He omitted the tribe of Shimon from both. Again, after the debacle at Shittim, um, he had a problem with the tribe of Shimon. When entering the Holy Land, the Jewish people encamped at Har Grizim, Mount Grizim, and Mount Avel where they recounted the blessings and curses that would be fall, upon, fall on them based on their compliance with or rejection of the Torah. There are 11 tehilots were forgotten after Moshe's death, and these are the 11 klipos, the shells, that are the underlying basis of the 11-day journey from Mount Sinai to the land of Israel, which was the initial idea that God was going to take the Jews with. The Medrash says that this corresponds to the 11 tribes that Moshe blessed before his death in order to weaken these forces, which are known to the Kabbalists as the basis for the 11 curtains in the Mishkan. 11 spices in the Kentoris, the 11 verses that begin and end with the letter Nun, all corresponding to the 11 Klipos, which cause forgetfulness which is why the 11 Tehilos were forgotten based on the Yalkut Ruveni. The numerical value of the word Chag, festival, is 11. May God bless us all so that we can celebrate the ultimate holiday, the coming of Mashiach Sidkenu. May he come quickly in our time. And again, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully next week we'll continue with the number 12. God bless and have a good Shabbos.